Of all the metrics we commonly discuss at Extreme Tech, we'd argue TDP, thermal design power, is easily the worst. McDonald's didn't become the world's biggest fast food chain by accident. Behind those decades of success lies plenty of innovation and outside-the-box corporate strategy, characteristics that have defined the chain since the first McDonald's opened in the late 1940s. Arguably one of the most important innovations behind the worldwide expansion of McDonald's that followed has been McDonald's Hamburger University. What began as a small training seminar held within a McDonald's location in the early 1960s has grown to become the gold standard of corporate training facilities, headquartered in a sprawling campus outside Chicago. And while some may snicker about graduates coming away with a Bachelor of Hamburgerology, there's a lot more to Hamburger U than learning how to make the perfect Big Mac. If clock speed, core counts, IPC, and memory bandwidth are imperfect methods of comparing the capabilities of two processors, TDP, at least as it's communicated on current Intel desktop processors, has moved past imperfection and is now downright bad. Anantech recently published a deep dive into the power consumption and behavior of two different Intel Comet Lake processors. In fact, those who've trained at the Chicago area campus or one of the numerous Hamburger University satellite locations throughout the world gain invaluable experience designed to help them rise up within the corporate ranks. There's a lot that the average person may not realize about this unique training program. Read on to discover the untold truth of McDonald's Hamburger University. McDonald's Hamburger University has been around since the early 60s from its humble origins in the early 60s. McDonald's Hamburger University has grown to become a groundbreaking educational facility that's changed the game for American fast food. According to the best schools, Hamburger U was founded in 1961 by Fred L. Turner, a former McDonald's fry cook who ascended the ranks to become McDonald's manager of operations. The core i71070K, 8C, 16T, 3.8 GHz base, 5.1 GHz peak, 4.7 GHz all core, 125 WTDP, was compared against the core i71070, 8C, 16T, 2.9 GHz base, 4.8 GHz peak, 4.6 GHz all core, 65 WTDP. As the Chicago Tribune recalled, the first Hamburger University graduating class consisted of just 15 students, with classes held in the basement of a McDonald's restaurant in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. From that tiny little burger flipping acorn grew a giant tree. In 1983, the $40 million Hamburger University campus opened its doors, a sprawling facility located on 80 acres in Oak Brook, Illinois. That campus, noted business insider, includes 17 teaching rooms, three kitchen labs, a 300-seat auditorium, and eight interactive education team rooms. Also part of Hamburger University is Heritage Hall, a museum exhibit devoted to the history of McDonald's. Among the memorabilia on display in the Golden Archives is the original clown suit worn by the very first Ronald McDonald. McDonald's Hamburger University is about a lot more than burgers it would be understandable to assume that the lessons students learn at McDonald's Hamburger University are focused on creating uniform burgers and cooking techniques. That, however, is only a small part of the curriculum. According to a report on the facility from Bloomberg QuickTakes, this is where future McDonald's managers and franchise owners are taught everything necessary to run a successful McDonald's franchise operation. If we're going to go anywhere, We've got to have some talent, and I'm gonna put my money into talent, said legendary McDonald's chief Ray Kroc in a vintage interview. That philosophy has guided Hamburger University since the beginning, and Hamburger University's goal is to hone and shape that talent. As Bloomberg QuickTakes pointed out, Hamburger U is not a cooking school. Rather, the goal is to give managers the business acumen needed to run a restaurant that, on average, rakes in about $2.6 million in revenue. They have to think bigger picture, explained Hamburger U professor Rochelle Tandy. A lot of times we get bogged down in the day to details. The point of the comparison was to measure the performance of the 65 WCPU, with its much lower base clock, against the overclocking enabled model with nearly 2x the TDP. On paper, an Intel CPU's TDP is the maximum power consumed under a sustained workload at base frequency. It's about the big, big picture and really diagnosing the situation to make it better. 
There are McDonald's Hamburger University locations all over the world Not only did McDonald's Hamburger University evolve far beyond its humble beginnings in a restaurant basement, the concept has also expanded into other parts of the world. The reason the 10700K has a 125 WTDP versus the 10765 WTDP is because of the huge gap in their base clock. The $52 price difference between the K and non-K version of the CPU, combined with the lower base clock and lower TDP all imply that a buyer who chooses a Core i7-10700 as opposed to the Core i7-10700K will be buying a lower power version of the chip that trades performance for power efficiency. In reality, the Core i7-10700 winds up drawing even more power than the Core i7-10700K, this requires a bit of explaining. AMD, it should be noted, uses a different formula for TDP. In fact, a 2011 article in Bloomberg listed the various international Hamburger University campuses, including one in Tokyo, which is housed within a skyscraper, that opened in 1972, and another in Munich, launched in 1982. Additionally, in 2010, McDonald's opened a 28-story Hamburger University in the Chinese city of Shanghai. AMD defines its TDP values based on the entire operating range of the CPU. 95W and 105W chips can draw no more than 142W from the motherboard unless the end user overrides it. Similarly, 65W chips are limited to 88W of power draw unless overridden. TDP doesn't imply what it used to the fact that I have to use the word imply, up there is another reason why TDP deserves a nomination for worst metric ever. In its first year of operation, the Shanghai Hamburger U trained 1,000 out of about 70,000 McDonald's employees in mainland China. Furthermore, as noted by Mirror, there are also Hamburger University campuses in London, Sydney, Sao Paulo, and Moscow. Joel Silverstein, President of Hong Kong-based restaurant consultants East West Hospitality Group Limited, explained the rationale behind opening up all those international campuses. It's getting harder and harder to hire employees in the food service business, Silverstein shared. AMD and Intel have always been careful to tell reviewers and enthusiasts that TDP isn't a measure of power consumption. For at least a decade, However, there was a reasonably consistent relationship between the TDPs Intel and AMD claimed on their CPU specs and the maximum power consumption you'd see from the chip in a typical workload. If an Intel chip claimed a 95W maximum TDP, the CPU would typically top out around 85W90W. At times, AMD or Intel have released a new version of a previously launched chip at a lower TDP, further emphasizing the idea that lower TDPs equals lower expected power consumption. It should be noted that the Core i51060K conforms to the old rule. The main reason that McDonald's put up the Hamburger University is to professionalize the sector, making it easier to recruit better people. Students earn an honorary Bachelor of Hamburgerology from McDonald's Hamburger University students who complete the training at McDonald's Hamburger University take home more than just invaluable knowledge about running a fast food franchise. They also come away from the experience with a Bachelor of Hamburgerology diploma. It's rated at 125W, and it draws 131W at peak. And while some may joke about graduating from Hamburger University, the philosophy behind those degrees is dead serious. The 65W version of the CPU, the Core i51600, almost certainly suffers from the same problem as the Core i71070 compared to the 10700K, namely, drawing far more than 65W. If you think about it, each of them is running a multi-million dollar business, Rob Lauber, Vice President and Chief Learning Officer of McDonald's Restaurant Solutions Group, told the Chicago Tribune of Hamburger U graduates. We can't confirm it without testing, but based on how the core i71070 compares to the 1070K, there's little reason to doubt the core i51060 would also substantially exceed its 65W envelope using default OEM motherboard settings. For most of the 2010s, Intel kept its typical desktop CPU power consumption at or below the CPU's rated TDP, even at peak power draw. Once AMD launched Ryzen and Intel had to start adding more CPU cores to its desktop parts, that changed. 
the core i910850K draws up to 265W but claims a 125W TDP. So we want to make sure they have good business grounding. So how does one earn a Bachelor of Hamburgerology? Students are graded on how they respond in simulations of actual scenarios that would take place within a restaurant, in addition to a putting together a group presentation given at the end of the course. Anyone who manages to score above 90% earns a coveted position on the dean's list, along with a gold seal on that diploma. On average, just 10% of students make it onto the dean's list. Studying at McDonald's Hamburger University can be used as college credits in addition to those Hamburgerology degrees. Studying at McDonald's Hamburger University can also count toward college credits. The core I-710700 claims 65W, but draws up to 214W under load, at motherboard defaults. The old relationship between TDP and expected power consumption no longer holds true at the high end of Intel's market. As CNN reported, McDonald's employees who study at Hamburger U, can earn up to 23 credits toward associate or bachelor degrees. Meanwhile, those on a higher rung of McDonald's corporate ladder can earn up to 27 credits. Enterprising employees have taken the opportunity to advance their educations, using Hamburger U as a springboard. For example, CNN pointed to Shelly Hicks, who was the manager of a Nashville-area McDonald's. She used her McDonald's University credits as a springboard to get a business degree, and ultimately a master's degree in adult education. The core I-710700 is guaranteed to draw no more than 65W if you disable Turbo. If you don't, the CPU will accept whatever turbo guidelines it's handed by the motherboard. OEMs control motherboard turbo values Intel doesn't dictate turbo frequencies to the various motherboard companies. Instead, it encourages them to over-engineer their boards and define their own values for short-term maximum power draw, defined as PL2, and other, overclocking-related variables. She's not alone. According to Kevin Clark, who leads McDonald's education program, 350 of the 5,000 managers who study at Hamburger University each year go on to take the extra step of getting their McDonald's U transcripts approved in order to use them toward earning a college degree. Hicks has come full circle in her journey through higher education. After earning her degree, she's now one of 16 professors training employees at the Oak Brook campus of Hamburger University. Attending McDonald's Hamburger University can be tougher than getting into Harvard being accepted as a student at McDonald's Hamburger University isn't easy. As Bloomberg reported, this is particularly true of the Chinese Hamburger U in Shanghai, where the acceptance rate of applicants is a mere 1%. Meanwhile, Britain's Mirror noted that the London Hamburger U only accepts 8 out of every 1,000 applicants, an even lower percentage. When compared to Harvard University with an acceptance rate of about 7%, and Oxford University 18%, Hamburger University is far tougher to get into than both of those storied bastions of higher education. That competitiveness makes sense when considering the role Hamburger University can play in propelling its students up the company's ranks. This is one way Intel gives OEMs the opportunity to differentiate their products. Peter Jankowski's, co-chief investment officer of Oakbrook Investments LLC, which owns approximately 300,000 shares of McDonald's stock, said, it's certainly possible to move up through the hierarchy. Many people do consider fast food in general as kind of a dead end, but in the case of McDonald's, they have a very strong professional organization. Case in point. Bloomberg notes that former McDonald's CEO Jim Skinner started out as a management trainee in 1971. In 2009, he earned $17.6 million. McDonald's Hamburger University boasts hundreds of thousands of graduates that first graduating class of McDonald's Hamburger University may have only had 15 students, but those numbers have exploded, especially after all those international campuses sprang up in far-flung parts of the world. If Asus, Gigabyte, or MSI want to over-engineer a motherboard to appeal to the hardest of the hardcore overclocking set, they're allowed to do it. If that board can run a given CPU at a higher frequency for longer, Intel says it's fine to let it do so. AMD and Intel give OEMs freedom to define these parameters because both companies actively want to cater to hardcore enthusiasts pushing the performance edge. As the Chicago Tribune reported in 2015, 
By that point more than 330,000 people worldwide had taken courses at Hamburger U for many of the thousands upon thousands of McDonald's employees to seek training at Hamburger U, it marks their first experience with higher education. We estimate between 20 and 30 percent of our restaurant managers haven't finished high school, said Rob Lauber, vice president and chief learning officer of McDonald's Restaurant Solutions Group, who also oversees Hamburger University. Additionally, the way that education has been imparted to students at Hamburger University has changed significantly over the years. According to Bill Mitchell, dean of the flagship Hamburger University in Oak Brook, Classes used to primarily consist of lectures, but have since evolved to incorporate a lot more team exercises. McDonald's Hamburger University inspired a 1986 comedy movie McDonald's Hamburger University has not only provided opportunities and education to thousands of the company's employees over the years, it's also served as the inspiration for a movie, the 1986 cult comedy Hamburger, The Motion Picture. The difference in power consumption between Intel's formal recommended specs and an OEM's default values is quite large. When set to Intel defaults, the Core i7-1070K drops back to 125W after a short boost period. When set to motherboard default values, the chip will run at 217W indefinitely. As Anantech notes, Intel is fully supportive of motherboard vendors changing these values. The company has suggested that reviewers should test multiple commercial motherboards before launch to compare these behaviors. As a synopsis on the website of the British Film Institute makes clear, the name McDonald's is never used, but it's not much of a stretch to see where the idea for the film originated. Readers should be aware that no website or publication has the bandwidth to conduct such exhaustive comparisons prior to launch, particularly given the realities of late-arriving hardware and last-second UEFI updates that change the behavior of the CPU from version to version. Intel needs to improve its power consumption and clock speed communication while we acknowledge that OEMs ultimately control turbo mode settings, selling a CPU with a 65W TDP when that CPU will actually draw over 200W if run at motherboard defaults is disingenuous. A gang of teenagers are trying to graduate from a 12-week course at Busterberger University, a school for those who wish to learn about fast food, the synopsis stated. Intel, unfortunately, has made communication changes that make the situation worse. Intel recently changed how it talks about its Tiger Lake CPUs. The final test is to run a fast food outlet for the public, which causes mayhem. Described as a great bad movie, by Real Rundown, Hamburger, the motion picture didn't exactly sweep the Oscars. It did, however, boast a cast that can generously be described as eclectic. As IMDb noted, Lee McCloskey, who subsequently found success in various soaps, including The Young and the Restless, starred, alongside Chuck McCann, who earned his Z-movie cred in Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, NFL great Dick Butkus, and Sandy Hackett, progeny of comedian Buddy Hackett. Burgers aren't the only things that get grilled at McDonald's Hamburger University students at McDonald's Hamburger University who expected to sail through with minimal effort no doubt received a big wake-up call when they actually began their studies. Here's a comparison from Intel's ARC website, where you can look up various processor specifications. This is a comparison of the embedded Core i7-1185GRE versus the mobile Core i7-1180G7. Embedded is on the left, mobile on the right. With the embedded part, Intel specifies a 15W TDP and a 1.8 GHz base clock. As the Chicago Tribune reported, students are put through their paces in courses such as shift management, introduction to management, and guest services before they get to the session known as GM Capstone. Training Magazine described that grand finale, GM Capstone, as an intensive five-day simulation to train McDonald's general managers, designed to help them learn to think and perform in ways that improve their restaurant's performance. At the staff level, our performance development system is based on performance drivers considered key to leadership, with training and performance reviews aligned around eight leadership competencies and expected behaviors for each level, McDonald's Vice President of U.S. Training Diana Thomas explained. Individual development plans, created in collaboration with the boss, map out leadership training in support of one's performance and career goals. Training at McDonald's Hamburger University gets pretty intense anyone who believes that McDonald's Hamburger University is a walk in the park will be surprised by the level of difficulty posed by the curriculum. This means the company is guaranteeing a 1.8 GHz clock within a 15W TDP if Turbo is disabled. 
On the right-hand side, with Tiger Lake, Intel defines a range of TDPs 7W, 15W, and a range of base frequencies 900 MHz to 2.2 GHz. It's left to the end user to guess what TDP the OEM has targeted, and what the minimum performance of the machine will be. The nature of turbo settings, as implemented by both Intel and AMD, allow the chip to exceed its defined TDP. AMD CPUs have a TDP of 105W and will burst up to 140W, a difference of 1.33x. An Intel CPU with a 65W TDP will boost up to 215W, a difference of 3.3x. According to a report on Hamburger U by the Chicago Tribune, training can be intense. In fact, each Hamburger University is equipped with a down-to-the-last-detail simulation of an actual McDonald's restaurant. Note that this problem seems to largely be confined to Intel's higher-end, lower-power CPUs. The Core i51060OK is within its TDP at peak power consumption, while the 10700, 1070OK, and 1085OK very much are not. Students are tasked with doing a walkthrough in order to spot deficiencies, with the Tribune listing such examples as boxes of McDonald's French fries stacked on a floor they're supposed to be stored in a freezer and a salt shaker next to the deep fryer that had no salt in it. One student who excelled at Hamburger University is Richard Tudor of Marquette, Michigan. According to the Mining Journal, he earned Hamburger University's highest academic achievement the Fred Turner Award, presented to the student in each graduating class to achieve the highest grades in all courses. As Tudor told the newspaper, the training he received at Hamburger University helped him, not only professionally, but personally. The experience at Hamburger U, led him to learn, more about myself than I did about McDonald's. Owners of a McDonald's franchise are expected to put in some serious time at Hamburger University McDonald's Hamburger University isn't just a resource that the fast food chain's franchise owners can take advantage of, it's actually mandatory. The Core i51060, while not measured here, would likely also have a peak power consumption well above its 65W TDP. Intel has a choice to make it's easy to see why Intel hasn't changed the way it defines or communicates TDP to its customers, it would make the company's high-end look vastly worse compared with AMD. According to Franchise Business Review, owners are required to spend 12 to 18 months learning the ropes. Of course, that doesn't mean that franchise owners have to spend a full year at Hamburger University. A number of the courses can actually be completed online, on a part-time basis. However, owners are required to be fully trained in its core restaurant leadership curriculum before being able to actually own and operate a McDonald's restaurant. The costs of all that study, however, aren't paid by the owner. McDonald's itself absorbs the training costs. However, owning a McDonald's franchise is not an inexpensive proposition. As Franchise Business Review explained, an owner's initial investment will typically range between $1.263 million to $2.235 million, which includes a one-time franchise fee of $45,000. For that, the owner will receive 4% of the restaurant's total gross sales. Traditional educators can learn a thing or two from McDonald's Hamburger University. It's no secret that McDonald's Hamburger University is not your typical educational institution. A Core i91085OK will draw up to 265W. If you want an AMD CPU with that kind of power budget you have to buy a Threadripper. There's nothing wrong with Intel building a chip that draws 250W+, but end customers need to know what kind of cooling solution they need and how to configure a motherboard for low power, efficient performance. While the high efficiency community is smaller than the high performance community, People can and do build small form factor machines explicitly intended to operate in lower power envelopes. A buyer who picks up a 65W Core i71070 for this kind of build may be unhappily surprised by the behavior of the CPU. Even if they aren't, a 3.3x gap between listed TDP and actual power consumption makes the data worse than useless for the end user. However, its relatively brief history has been one characterized by innovation, evolution, and the execution of bold new ideas. According to Donna Kidwell, Chief Technology Officer of Arizona State University's Ed Plus, there are some lessons that traditional educators can learn from Hamburger University and its training techniques. 
Not only does a 65 WTDP mean nothing as far as the behavior the end user will see, it actively encourages the buyer to think of the 65 W CPU as an intrinsically lower power chip than the 125 W CPU. If you buy a franchise, you're essentially taking on a business model. As Anantec shows, this is not the case. Given that end users still associate TDP with some indication of how much power the CPU will draw, Intel has a choice to make. It can continue to obfuscate actual power consumption data, or it can change its metrics and begin reporting meaningful values that help customers choose the processor they want to buy. Right now, according to AD, the Core i71070OK is $52 more expensive than the Core i71070 and leads the latter by about 2%. Power consumption between the two shows the Core i 71070 ok draws about 10W less at maximum load, likely due to superior binning. Intel is currently moving in the wrong direction on these metrics. That's what you're actually getting, Kidwell explained in an interview for Ed Surge. Removing base clock reporting from Tiger Lake is dishonest. You're adopting their practices. In fact, Kidwell's own participation in a corporate training program similar to Hamburger University led her to realize how extremely powerful it was to have well-thought-out educational experiences. Not just training, but educational experiences that were relevant and that someone could then immediately use, and how that made them hungry to come back. McDonald's Hamburger University was the site of a protest resulting in mass arrests McDonald's Hamburger University has won much acclaim, yet it's occasionally been associated with controversy. So is selling users a 65W CPU that draws over 200W at OEM motherboard defaults without informing them. These omissions self-evidently favor Intel by allowing it to report lower TDPs relative to AMD. In 2014, according to Bloomberg, a crowd of protesters estimated at numbering between 1,000 and 1,500 assembled at Hamburger University's campus in Oak Brook, Illinois. The mob, which included 325 McDonald's employees in their uniforms, stormed through the company's campus entrance. The protesters were demanding to form a union, as well as a wage increase to $15 per hour. As McDonald's employee Melinda Topol explained, she was earning a measly $7.50 an hour, and had traveled from Kansas to participate in the protest. They imply that Intel cares more about making its products look good than communicating honestly with its customers about what kind of behavior they should expect. Building a low-power system with a chip that Canon will boost to 215W unless specifically configured not to do so is something people should be made aware of, up front. It's fine to give OEMs the freedom to set power limits as they wish, but customers also need to be informed of how this freedom could impact their own system builds. At present, there is no apparent relationship between the rated TDP of high-end Intel desktop processors and the power consumption you will actually see at the motherboard level at OEM default settings. We deserve a livable wage, she said, noting that she relies on government assistance to get by. The protest was ultimately halted by police in riot gear, with more than 100 protesters placed under arrest. The size of the gap will vary based on motherboard model. We respect the right to protest, to peacefully protest. Some commercial boards do hold to Intel default settings, but enthusiast desktop boards typically don't. The problem here isn't that Intel gives OEMs freedom to define their own turbo operating modes. And I think that's what you saw here today, Heidi Barker, McDonald's spokesperson, told Chicago's ABC 7 Eyewitness News. When it comes to the minimum wage, that's a national discussion. The problem is the fact that Intel's published TDPs no longer reflect what the end user can expect. Intel can hide behind the fact that technically TDP isn't meant to function as a measure of power consumption, but it has directly benefited from user perceptions to the contrary. It's not a McDonald's issue, it's an economic issue. We'll look to the folks in Washington to determine what happens. One McDonald's Hamburger University grad was forced to defend her degree graduates of McDonald's Hamburger University receive a Bachelor of Hamburgerology diploma at the end of their two weeks of intensive training. It benefits from those assumptions because those assumptions used to be true. What precisely that means was at the center of a controversy involving Diana Laporta during her 1996 run for a spot on the school board of Florida's Volusia County. The world didn't end when AMD introduced the FX9590, a CPU with a 220W TDP. 
Laporta had landed in hot water with the local media over claims she was misrepresenting her education by claiming to hold a bachelor's degree in business administration from Hamburger University. It says bachelor's degree on the diploma, and that's what I told you, she declared in an interview with the Orlando Sentinel. Let's not make this non-issue into something it isn't. Laporta's claim didn't receive a whole lot of support from Hamburger University's former dean, Hal Thais. Intel's world won't end if the company starts publishing either the peak or the typical full load power consumption of its chips. Intel has the right to define metrics that are only valuable to OEMs, but it doesn't have the right to present those metrics as if they say something pertinent or useful to its customers. Right now, Intel desktop CPU TDPs are effectively worthless as far as predicting the power consumption behavior you'll see in an enthusiast motherboard using OEM defaults. He told the Sentinel that characterizing her hamburgerology degree in the manner that she did was somewhat disingenuous. This is demonstrably true for the Core i7-10700 versus the 10700K, and we strongly suspect it would prove true for the Core i5-10600 versus the 10600K as well. While AMD CPUs also exceed their TDPs at peak power, they do not do so to the same degree. It's a bit misleading that she would say it that way, they said. AMD has also introduced an eco mode with its Ryzen 3000 series, via Ryzen Master, which allows end users to reduce power consumption one step down from stock. Intel can solve this problem in a lot of ways. It could begin publishing peak TDP or create a new metric that more accurately captures actual power consumption. And that's the polite way to put it. It could raise the base TDP to align stated power consumption with the CPU's all-core power consumption at turbo in a representative, rather than a peak, workload. It could create a method for end users to set a CPU to a given TDP in software. All of these changes would improve the current status quo. Intel needs to course correct if it wants the press to continue to consider its published TDP values for desktop and mobile to represent valid, useful information. The only thing Intel's TDP values currently tell you is what kind of thermal dissipation an OEM needs to provide if they only want to run a CPU at base clock, with no turbo whatsoever. This is of no use to high-end users and should be treated accordingly. AMD's published TDP numbers do not represent peak power draw, but measured peak power is only 1.16x, 5600x, to 1.33x, 5900x, above the claimed 105W TDP. Intel's measured peak power is 1.63x higher than TDP for the Core i7-1070K, 2.12x higher for the Core i9-10850K, and 3.3x higher for the Core i7-10700. There's no way to claim the Core i7-10700 as a 65W CPU with a straight face. Not given the practical realities of how OEMs configure their own motherboards. A 14 nanometer CPU with a 200W250W TDP doesn't compare as well against AMD as a 14 nanometer CPU with a 65W125W TDP, but Intel famously prides itself on being engineering driven, not marketing driven. The company has a chance to prove it here. Rocket Lake launches in March. Intel can take this opportunity to define a more honest TDP rating provide a new alternate metric, and or provide an eco mode that's easily accessible in software to help efficiency-minded users. For now, our advice is to take any published Intel high-end desktop TDP and multiply the claimed value by 1.5x 3.3x for a more accurate estimate of peak CPU power consumption. Use 1.5x 2.25x for regular high-end desktop CPUs, and 2.25x 3.3x for lower power SCUS. While that's a very rough estimate, it's far more accurate than Intel's published desktop TDPs. This problem likely extends at least as far down the stack as the Core i5-10600 versus the Core i 510600 k AMD reliably lands within or relatively near to its claimed TDP values, while Intel's smallest measured excursion is nearly twice the size of AMD's largest. Hopefully Intel's incoming CEO, Pat Gelsinger will make changes that lead to better communication. As things stand today, AMD and Intel desktop TDP values are not comparable, and while both companies exceed their published values under peak load, AMD's are at least in the ballpark of their measured values. Intel's are not. Now read.